So in the previous video, we derived e of x is equal to lambda for the Poisson distribution. In this video, I want to derive var of x. OK, so in order to get var of x, we know that that is e of x squared take away e of x, all squared. OK, now, as we did with the binomial distribution, extension video for this, um, we recognise that the formula for the Poisson distribution has a factorial in it. So, it seems reasonable to once again, with the e of x squared, write that as e of x squared take away x plus x. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that, because I'm just taking away x and adding x. That's perfectly fine. But what that enables me to do is now break that apart as e of x squared take away x plus e of x take away e of x squared. And I'm going to factorise this to make x take away x minus 1 plus e of x take away e of x squared. So now I focus my attention on e of x times x minus 1. Which we know is going to be the summation from r is 0 to infinity, because there is no bound on n here. And this will be r times r minus 1 times by the probability of x being equal to r, which is going to be this. OK, so I'm going to go straight in with saying that. Right. OK. So the first thing to note is that when r is 0, the first term is just going to be 0, because you've got r at the front. And when r is equal to 1, this bracket will become 0. And so actually, the first two terms in this summation are 0. So I could rewrite this as the summation from r is equal to 2 to infinity of r times r minus 1, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the r over r factorial. Now, r factorial, we know from the previous video, we could just write as r times r minus 1 factorial. But r minus 1 factorial is just r minus 1 times r minus 2 times r minus 3, all the way down to 1. So that's actually the same as r times r minus 1 times r minus 2 factorial. So the r factorial there can be written in that way. And we've already got the r, r minus 1 there. So they're going to cancel away. I'm also going to bring the e to the minus lambda out of the front of the summation, because it's got nothing to do with r, so there's no problem with me doing that. And remember, I've cancelled the r, r minus 1. So I've got lambda to the r over r minus 2 factorial. Now, it makes sense at this stage to do just what I did in the previous video. And I'm, instead of factoring out lambda, as I did in the previous video, I'm going to factor out lambda squared. Because I essentially want to get the power to be the same as that value there. So I want an r minus 2 here. So I'm going to factor lambda squared out of the numerator. And I would have to have lambda to the power of r minus 2 now. Now, because the lambda squared has got nothing to do with r, I can pull that out of the summation as well. And I've now got lambda squared e to the minus lambda times the summation from r is equal to 2 to infinity of lambda to the r minus 2 over r minus 2 factorial. OK, now I'm going to introduce a substitution to make this uh, more obvious as to what's going on. So we're going to let y be equal to r minus 2. So I've got this lambda squared e to the minus lambda 
then I've got the summation. Now, it's starting at r is equal to 2. When r is 2, y is going to be equal to 0. And r is going up to infinity, so y must also be going to infinity. We've got lambda to the y over y factorial. Now, if we focus our attention on this summation, that is precisely the same as what we have here. OK, just with the letters are slightly different, but it's the same thing. And we then, because that's e to the x, this must be e to the lambda. So we've got lambda squared, e to the minus lambda, times e to the lambda. And so that is just 1. And so we've got lambda squared. So what I've shown is that this is lambda squared. I already know that e of x is lambda. And I know e of x squared is lambda squared. So the lambda squareds cancel, and I get left with lambda. So that means the variance of x is equal to lambda also. And that's how we can derive it.